Well, good evening everyone and thanks so much for logging on to join us for your very first webinar in the Get Up to Speed program. This is of course intake two for the Get Up to Speed program. We ran intake one from March until about a month ago and we're very excited to have some of our intake one participants joining us for a refresher but more of you are probably brand new ones to the program so I wanted to extend to you a very big welcome. And also let you know that tonight, apart from content, we'll definitely be recovering some of the components of the program so we can make sure that you really are going to get the most out of the program and know exactly what it is you're in store, in store for. But in short, um, tonight's lesson is mainly about your online toolbox. And this is the pattern you'll find um, will occur throughout the 12 weeks you're with us. We'll distribute an e-lesson on Saturday, so now you should have all received e-lessons. And I'll go through some things you can do if for any reason you haven't received one. And don't worry, whilst it's great if you have and you have had time to look at it, it's not essential to participate in the webinar. And um, then we do some content, we'll recover some of those points from that e-lesson, but we'll often expand, we'll give case studies. And this is your chance to, I guess, get this information in a different way. Um, it is to some degree determined by you because towards the end of the session, I let you ask questions as well. So let's move on. Um, for those of you I haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, a really quick introduction um, to me. So my name is Yvette Adams and I'm an award-winning business owner. I'm a pretty honest kind of person and I'll let you know I'm actually not looking as, as smick as I am in that photo there. I'm actually in my pyjamas tonight. And isn't that great that we can do these webinars and participate in our pyjamas if we want to. Now, <clears throat> I like to interact with you guys. Make sure you haven't gone to sleep and have a little bit of fun. So I would like to direct you to some of the functions of the webinar right now. Now, the first thing I want you to do is click on the red button that has an arrow and that should expand the menu. You should therefore be able to um, put up your hand. So once you've expanded that menu, if you're in your pyjamas tonight too, could you raise your hand? I can see Christine Carroll's got hers up, Gabriella, Gail, come on, be honest, guys, Helena, Jacqueline. Looks like all the girls have got their pyjamas in, but perhaps the guys are a little bit embarrassed to admit it. Oh, a few of you have. Very funny. Okay, now I'm going to ask another very personal question, and this is my sense of humour. You'll get used to it. Who is begrudgingly giving up watching Home and Away tonight to participate in this webinar? Do we have any diehard Home and Away fans you want to raise your hands to? And if you think, oh my gosh, what am I in for with this girl who likes Home and Away, feel free to text chat me and say, what a load of rubbish. Now, that's also a function you can do, and I want you to react like that. So throughout the session, feel free to say, great idea, what a load of rubbish. Um, you know, I have experienced this too. So drop me a line here. Okay, cool. What a load of rubbish, says Russell Mason. <laughs> And Julie and Gay, fair enough. Missing the swimming, Jackie's more upset about that. Master Chef and Ever and Russell's also laughing. Cool. Well, that's what this is all about. We're all having a bit of fun. Very, very good. All right, a little bit more background on me. Um, I am sorry for taking you away from the Olympics. I hope you've all got Ozstar or recording devices that you can uh, catch up on this stuff later. And of course, if ever there is a TV show that you really can't pry yourself away from, a Master Chef final or something, I don't know. Um, of course, you can always watch these recorded after the fact, but if you do have questions pertaining to this topic, it is a good idea to get on and enjoy them live because you'll get the very most out of the program. And wow, I want to say a very special welcome actually to a name I've just noticed on the list, Susie Soakai. She was in an all-day laptop session with me today um, learning about SEO and she just decided to join the program and here she is tonight. Congrats to you especially. That's a, a big commitment. Good on you. Okay, um, right, back to a little bit of background. Look, I call myself a serial entrepreneur. Um, I didn't realize it at the time. When I was at school, I didn't know what I wanted to be. Um, I knew that I liked sports. I thought I'd go to the Olympics even. I was a sports fanatic. Um, I definitely didn't think I'd work with computers, and I never actually studied computers at school. So maybe that will help you feel a bit better if you're sort of new to this whole computer game. The only time I ever interacted with computers at school actually was when I was in journalism class. And we had to lay out the page. I'd, I'd written everything handwritten and I just about threw the thing out the window. Hands up if you've ever felt like throwing a computer out the window, just reached a high level of frustration with it. 
because if you have, you're not alone. So I like being honest about this stuff. Well, I have. And um, I did, however, start my first business at age 17. It was a secondary school sports newspaper. Told you I like the sports thing. And the only reason I really did it was because my dad came to me and he said, um, here's a school sports paper that they produce in um, Auckland. I was from Wellington, New Zealand, as you, um, in case you hadn't guessed already. And um, he said, why don't you do this? And I said, oh, come on, Dad, I'm only 17. I've only just started learning about journalism. But then when I realized that I could get an income from this thing, from the advertisers, that might actually pay for my water polo, which was my big sport, um, then my eyes pricked up and I started going about business. So before you know it, I had the office ladies at my high school running in with post-it notes saying, oh, look, it's Pepsi Cola. They want to advertise in your publication. Quick, you better get excused out of history class and call them back. So that's exactly what I did. And then just after one issue had been published, I had an American guy approach me and say, you've stolen my idea. And I said, um, how on earth have I stolen your idea when I didn't even know um, uh, about you? And uh, anyway, we, we had my first business meeting around a boardroom table, took my dad along, who was a teacher. And um, yeah, basically we cut a deal, which meant that he'd pay me a wage and I would work for his newspaper. I worked for him for the rest of my final year at school and that worked out okay. I did get that money I needed to go to Australia and, and play water polo, which I did. And then from then on, um, I entered the career at the New Zealand government's, um, it's like the Australian Sports Commission equivalent. So worked for the government, worked in a communications role there, did work with computers, though this is going back when not everyone had email. And in fact, in that communications department of five people, I had um, basically the one um, Apple computer which had the black screen with the green writing. Does anyone else here remember that sort of setup on in terms of computers? So I don't know um, how old you guys think I am, but I, I like to make those points that I do remember life before computers. And um, I'm actually a Generation XY cusper, and um, meaning I'm right on the cusp of the generational differences. So in some ways I can... Um, struggle with that technology and other ways I really adapt it and love it. Um, look, since then, my first online business, and I'll tell you lots of stories as we go on through the 12 weeks of online business things I've implemented, I've helped implement for other people and just things I've seen and picked up because I think stories are really, really good to share. They make these things make a lot of sense to, to a lot of people. Um, my second business was when I was 26 and I decided to start my first online business. So this was 2002. And I pretty much set it up pretty quick. So I built a logo, I made a website, threw it all together because I did have those skills then. I'd done a bit of graphic design and things, but just teaching myself. Never went to university or TAFE or anything like that to learn this stuff. And um, I was in Argentina of all places, Buenos Aires I was. And I traveled a lot in my 20s. For seven years, I traveled um, about 40 countries. Um, three of those trips were for one whole year each on a round the world trip, stopping at multiple destinations. So here I was in an internet cafe in those days where we needed those because we didn't have smartphones and, you know, these USBs that connected us to internet anywhere, anytime. And I found out that I'd won a website award and a government grant for my brand new business, which was called Tikanga T-shirts. Um, tikanga is a Maori word. Um, basically, it means... Um, it means culture and tikanga o te wa means fashion. So that was the na name I gave it. So that was pretty exciting stuff. So here was me in the internet cafe dancing around, very excited. I've won this award and things were going great. And um, look, I guess that's when I really stood up and took notice of this whole online thing. Because as I traveled all through South America, you know, I was in Rio when they won the World Cup football in 2002. That was pretty magic. Um, I continued on to London. I had this money rolling into my PayPal account and I could withdraw it if I wanted to. Now, look, it wasn't oodles and oodles of money, but it was a nice, easy income that I didn't have to do a lot of work for. But what I did learn through that process is stock was a bit difficult because I had to still have T-shirts. So I had some in my wardrobe in London, some in New Zealand and wherever the order came from globally. And I, I dealt in about four uh, currencies then on my PayPal account, which is very easy to do. Um, I would distribute it from its closest point um, either side of the world. Since then, um, I started the Creative Collective. So um, we are a, basically a creative agency. We started off offering website design and development, um, PR, marketing, graphic design, all that kind of stuff, because I had a little bit of skills in all of those areas. And um, 
I decided to offer those because people were sick of going from one provider to another. And I started giving it to friends and family. And then I realized there was really a big opportunity. So I started getting other contractors and things. And this was all done from home um, just seven weeks after my second child was born. So I had a three-year-old at home. He went to daycare a couple of weeks, a couple of days at that stage a week. And I had my brand new baby girl, seven weeks old. So she would sit there um, in the bouncer. I'd tap away. She slept a lot. She was a beautiful, easy baby. Um, but then, of course, as the business grew, her needs grew. And um, my time frames changed and I started becoming more of an night owl and doing stuff when um, when I played with her during the day. And that's essentially what I've done. So I like to give that background in this first lesson. Some of you who know me might know all these stories and others may never have heard the stuff about me. Um, but I wanted to tell you a bit of my online journey. And apart from all of that, I um, also had the privilege of working in London um, when the dot-com bubble was big. So I remember working at magazines called like TNT in London. Hands up if anyone's heard of that magazine or spent some time in London. If you have been there, you probably have. Um, so TNT magazine, um, I was there when they decided to go online for the first time. And uh, I was the online content editor and also had a fair bit of um, direction into the, I guess, build of the website, which in those days was um, XML rather than HTML. And uh, yeah, as a result of that, around that time we were doing, we were getting massages at work, we were getting free lunches, it was a great time to be part of the whole online thing, there was huge, like serious investment going into anything that was online related, this is around the time of Y2K as well, so there were people spending a lot of money thinking that some big bogey was going to pull down every computer system in the world around Y2K, and the bubble did burst um, in 2001, so I remember when all those great um, fun things got evaporated, basically, and jobs become very, very hard to come by. So um, I moved to Australia uh, 2004 um, with my first son, who was born in London, worked for other people, and then, I, as I said, started the Creative Collective. And these days, we're very proudly based in Maroochydore, the head office. We've got a franchisee on the Gold Coast who I can see her online tonight which is fantastic to have them learning the stuff as part of the program so they can pass that great knowledge on to their clients as well. And uh, one in Newcastle. And, um, yeah, we have people all over Australia working for us and even some Australians based elsewhere in the world. In fact, one of our guys, he's currently in Lake Garda, Italy, and he makes us super jealous by posting photos on Facebook about his latest sailing trips and, um, you know, the fact he's been to a 12th century cathedral that day and he's off to the Grand Prix that weekend and all these ridiculous sort of things so there we go so um, I guess I want to find out a little bit about you get ready to put up your hands guys I'm going to ask some um, wide questions so hands up here if you too are an, a home-based business like I started off um, life in raise your hands if you're a home-based business quite a few hands Okay. And how many of you are parents and you juggle um, whatever your business pursuit is around looking after kids as well? Because there's some really good little resources I'm going to share tonight that apart from learning this knowledge, apart from getting up to speed with this program for you yourself and to apply to business, some great stuff I'd love you to be starting to pass on to your children as well. I'm really, really passionate about that. I think, um, you know, a lot of us go, oh, well, the kids know more than I do, so I'll leave them to it and get them to teach me. But I think the more we can take on board and actually share with them, um, the more they'll respect us as well, which is fantastic. Okay, now hands up those of you, um, or actually, could you text me? How long have you been in business? Can you tell me that? Um, are you startup phase, six months in? And Ellen said, what about grandchildren? Yeah, sure, you can pass it on to grandchildren, absolutely, too. Um, 37 years Christine's been in business. Fabulous. I bet you've got some stories yourself. Um, 18 months, we've got five years, a few days, startup. Wow, you're a really mixed bunch. Six years, 20 months. Okay, 15 years, two years, a few. Really, really varied. Well, that's really good to know. So, look. No matter how long you have been in business, I'm pretty sure that you guys understand this whole online thing is pretty important. Hands up how many of you actually came along to the information session on the Sunshine Coast or you watched it online via the live stream or perhaps one of the recordings. 
Now, I won't go into that stuff in any great detail tonight. Cool, a few of you are welcome. Thanks for um, deciding to come and do this program. That's great. Look, I won't go into that stuff, but as I did say at that um, session, it's a really important point to make. I know personally how hard it is to have a small business, to be juggling staff and wearing all the hats. You've got to be the IT person and the HR person, the finance person and the marketing person. It's hard to juggle that with parents and actually having a life and, you know, going and spending time with your friends or your partner and doing fitness and whatever it is that makes you happy. Um, but you do have to make this stuff that we're teaching you in the program a priority. And like anything, if you can actually, um, the more time you put in, the more you'll get out of it. And I would actually argue if you don't make this stuff a priority, in a few years, you may not have a business to worry about being busy in any longer. That is the cold hard truth of it because the world is changing. And look, I feel for you guys, I really do, particularly those of you who have been in business a number of years. Because if you've always done what you've always done, it's even harder to change this very perhaps steady ship. It's quite a big redirection. And for many of you, the stuff you'll learn through this program is not just about um, learning a few things to make your website better or doing a bit of social media because that's this new thing. For some of you, you'll actually discover that this could be the start of a whole new business model. So that's quite a dramatic difference. Now, with all of this, I'm not saying you have to do that and it's going to be that, but you'll all go on your own journey, some of which will be quite dramatic. And um, I really do believe wholeheartedly that the businesses um, in the economy right now who aren't taking the stuff on board, who aren't implementing the stuff, they're the ones that are closing their doors right now. They're the ones who are really struggling to keep their heads above water. So a huge um, thank you and congratulations for taking the step you have so far. Okay, um, a few acknowledgements before we get into the content for tonight. I must thank Skills Queensland who gave us the money towards this program and I must also thank Broadband Today who sourced the funding and then um, through a tender process actually um, decided to work with us. Now just to explain how this works and where Broadband Today fit in, you've got Australia Government at the top, they're distributing funds to the NBN Co. And the NBN is, I guess, an enabler. The NBN is the National Broadband Network. It is, if you like, the railroad road tracks of internet connections getting um, put through the world at the moment, uh, put through Australia at the moment, that will enable us as business people to work far faster, to work more efficiently, um, and it opens up possibilities of the way we even do things. So this is another key message through the program. It's not about doing things the way you've always done, like emailing or websites or having a website in its normal form. I really want to push you guys and challenge you to push those boundaries and really um, have no limitations of what it is you could achieve online because it can do all sorts of crazy things. So anyway, NBN Co is effectively like an engineer. And then they've, um, but there was no one broadband today realized disseminating this information out into the communities. So it is now today, broadband today, a proud organization of 125 local government sectors, many of many councils in there, plus many key affiliate organizations. And through those networks, they effectively represent one in four Australians. So they're having a pretty big impact. And then through those members, if you like, of broadband today, they are disseminating information like this program for one in terms of businesses, community and industry groups. So Anthony, would you mind sending through to everyone via the chat text message um, broadbandtoday.com.au? We recently um, revised their website. We think it's a lot more user friendly. You'll notice it's quite a lot in design like the Get Up to Speed program and that's there's a reason for that. It's because um, you know, they secured the funds essentially it is their program. So I'd love you to check that out. It's a good one to know of and, and stay in touch with in terms of the um, developments over, over the years as well. Okay. Now I've just seen a, a cheeky comment from someone and I, I love that you guys know me so well that you know um, I love a laugh. Uh, Russell said, interesting, you don't sound like Michael We're at. You're right, Russell. Um, we're using Michael We're at's account um, as we were directed. And Michael We're at is, of course, the co-chair of Broadband Today. And that's why I don't sound like Michael. I'm Amy Beck, but I'm coming up in your list as Michael. 
it's probably worth also pointing out that we have online tonight um, Anthony Viner and Anthony is a very valuable uh, member of our team and Anthony is a good person to text chat along the way if you have any technical dramas. So Anthony is our resident geek. He looks after everything to do with how do you make this work, Anthony? Or my computer's doing this really weird thing um, or anything along those lines. You'll notice that he's already popping into the members lounge, which I'll tell you more about if you haven't already hooked into that and answering some of those more technical questions because none of us know all of it. There's just simply too much to know. Okay. So here's some stuff I definitely want to cover off. Um, one, getting the most out of the program. Two, what to do when you need help. Three, getting the most out of the webinar. We've actually kind of covered that. That's the functionality. The content, and as always, there will always be the chance for questions at the end. However, do feel free to submit um, questions to me um, via the text chat at any time. If I can't answer them there and then, I'll come back to them when we get to that question segment. If Anthony can answer them there and then, he will. And he knows a fair bit of this content. Okay. Now, a reminder. Let's set some expectations. What is this program? What do you get out of it? So I just want to make sure we're all on the same page here to start with. It is a 12-week program. This is week one. And I tell you what, it might sound like a long time, but it goes super quick. But the good news is you'll be over and done with this well before Christmas when the silly season comes and hopefully your business will be in a much better position and you'll be positioning it for a, a bumper Christmas or summer period if, if that is a season that is good for your business. You have these 12 webinars, which is what you're on now. So um, one each week, always on Tuesdays, always at 7.30. Sorry about the TV conflicts, all recorded. So you can then watch it at a time that suits you. So we have had in the first intake... People actually say, I'm off to Europe for a good part of the 12 weeks, but I'm going to come back and in those last two weeks when it's school holidays, I'm going to take time and I'm going to go through all of them. And we've said, that's fine. If that works for you, that's all good with us. Others have said, oh, my daughter's having a baby in the middle of it and there's going to be a couple of weeks so I won't be able to do it. And we've said, that's fine. Just come back and do it when you can. Now, in terms of the recordings, Anthony, what sort of commitment can we offer there? Is it generally about 24 to 48 hours that we will probably um, load them up into the system? He's saying yes, so that's great. Okay, um, Anthony's just pointed out that my Skype in the background is causing a bit of um, a disturbance, so I'm just going to make that logged out, and that should help. Okay, good one. Thanks for pointing that out, Anthony. Okay, um, you get the 12 e-lessons. Now, I said on Saturday you should have all received your first e-lesson. Now, you need to add us to your safe send us um, list. What that means is you need to add the email address um, help at getuptospeed.com.au into the contact address book of whatever um, email system it is you use whatever email you've given to us to send you that information whether it's on Outlook or Gmail or Hotmail I don't know add that to the contact list and those emails should come through after that it really does depend on your spam filters some of you may find for whatever reason it ends up in your spam so check there if you're still not receiving it do contact our office I'll give you the contact details and um, maybe provide an alternative email address um, there has been cases where people have completed their registration forms. There's been an ever so slight typo on their email and that has been the problem. Okay, um, with the email lessons, we send them on Saturday with the idea that you should be able to um, have some time to take a look at it, at least have a bit of a skim read, maybe even start getting into it. Now, some of the exercises, as you hopefully would have seen on that first one sent on Saturday, you may already know. You may read it and go, gosh, that's easy. I already know that stuff. And if that's the case, that's great. But if you don't, we strongly encourage you to action that point. And if you don't have time then, make sure you do it within the week. You don't have to keep up week to week, but it is ideal. You'll get the most out of the program if you're sort of looking at the e-lessons that we're covering off in the webinars. Um, you can then ask those specific questions. However, we're more than happy to answer your questions um, in the members lounge, which we'll cover off in a moment some more, or on the live webinars about past topics as well. 
private Facebook group we'll talk about more. There's a members only area full of resources. Who has already logged into the online resource portal is actually what we call that. Hands up if you have had a chance to log in and see what's in there. Okay, and hopefully you found it quite easy to find your way around and find some cool stuff in there. Drop me a, a text chat to tell me what you found and what you've been looking at. Now, there's also this accreditation, which I'll go into a moment, and there's a rebate, which I'll also go into. Actually, I think I'm going to leave those until the end. Now, here's what to do when you're on the program and you need help. This is a pretty important thing to know first up, we thought, as well. Number one is you can post a message on the Facebook group. Hands up if you're already a member of the Facebook group. You've requested access and you've been granted access. Okay, a few hands up. I've definitely noticed quite a few new ones coming on through and saying hello and, oh, the intake one crowd are so nice and they're all making friends and make you feel welcome. It warms my heart. It's lovely. Um, look, if you haven't requested access, Anthony, would you mind sending through the Facebook group link? And those who you do need to have a Facebook profile account. And if you don't already have a Facebook account and this is just all so scary, don't worry. Um, come about week seven we go through Facebook and then if you join the group then because that's your comfort levels that's fine. Anthony said he can't text that at the moment but I'm going to give it to you a bit later anyway. Okay there is an email many of you have already <coughs> excuse me have already emailed this this is help at getuptospeed.com.au don't hesitate to drop us a line on that anytime that email goes direct to Elise Riley she is the program coordinator She's full-time staff at our office, and she has already looked after Intake One beautifully. She will know the answer to most questions, and if she doesn't, she knows who to go to. So feel free to drop her a line about whatever it is. Number three is the mentors. You could contact a local mentor. Now, I'll talk a bit more about mentors at the end, but I did mention at the info sessions, mentors are great. If you're the type of person who likes to actually sit down and see someone, if you're finding this whole online experience meant, you know, the Facebook group and the webinars all a little bit, I don't know, impersonal, maybe you just need to have a coffee with a mentor um, and remind yourself that this is a, you know, a good program and that it is right for you. Look, mentors are good to sit down with when you're feeling overwhelmed, when you're feeling confused, when you're feeling disorganized. And just remember, we have a wide range of mentors. They're not all um, IT gurus by no means. Some of them, in fact, don't know any of that stuff and they've been engaging in the program to get up to speed themselves. Some of them um, are HR professionals, for instance, or they are um, <clears throat> finance people or um, IT people and all that kind of thing. So you pick a mentor who you think would be right for you. I can tell you that some of the mentors are getting quite full and we're actually on the lookout for a few more. Um, so we're hoping to add some new ones to the website um, in a, in, within the next few weeks that will become available to you and take two people. Okay, other participants are also a great source of help. Some of the different regions, um, I'd love you to text chat me actually, we're um, in... Sunshine Coast, or oh, sorry, where from Queensland you have logged in from tonight, where you're based, because some of them have set up meetup groups and they are listed mainly in the private uh, Facebook lounge. I believe there's one in Townsville. There's been talk of a Sunshine Coast one. I'm not sure if that um, has been activated yet or not. But either way, um, we'd love you to check that out. And if you want to initiate something, you'd just love to, you know, meet up, have a beer, have a wine, have a um, coffee, cup of tea, whatever, with other people doing this program to talk about the stuff, then please feel free to set that up. That's not something we'll facilitate apart from offer you the members lounge to do. Um, there is a phone number. This is our, our local number in Maroochydore, so please feel free to ring it. We will say the Creative Collective because that is our office, but that is where the Get Up to Speed program is run out of as well. Or bring your question or questions to the webinar. So quite a few options. I hope that sets a few records straight. Hands up if you're now very clear on what your options are of what you can do to get help if you're ever stuck with anything on the program which I hope makes you feel comfortable because is anyone here thinking, oh my gosh, the biggest thing I've ever done, this is a big deal. Some of you, it is quite, you know, it's been a while since you studied, for instance. Okay, 
Um, I'm going to skip past that because we covered it. Right. Next up, getting the right equipment and software. <clears throat> now let's get into the content, which uh, basically mirrors what you got in the e-lesson. Now in the e-lesson, we talked about the analogy of a builder. My partner's actually a builder, so I'm very used to this, but I find most people it makes sense to. Now, as I said in the e-lesson, the builder wouldn't dream of going off onto a work site without having the right equipment. Yet it always amazes me how many people just go and set up a web page or go and set up social media. And they don't really think about what tools or equipment or virus protection or any of that stuff they might need. Now, I don't know um, if any of you have struggled with this as well, but I used to at the start. I used to have a pretty crappy computer and um, it would be slow. And I'd think, gee, I'd like a new one. Oh, but I couldn't because, oh, the, you know, the kids need stuff for school and, you know, Often people are like that. I find parents in particular, they put everybody else first but themselves. You know, I was in New Zealand a couple of years ago and I was hanging out with a girlfriend of mine and her partner worked, but his work was kind of here and there. And just to get some extra money, she'd started going to the secondhand shops and getting um, label clothing and then selling it on eBay. And uh, she was very bemused by this whole thing. She said, you wouldn't believe it, Yvette. Look at these crappy pants. Just because they're a label, people want to pay 30 bucks for them. And she'd bought them for two. Great markup. I said, that's great, Sal. Good on you. Because she had kids at home and, you know, she had limited time. But she was on dial-up. And I said, why on earth are you trying to do this on dial-up, Sal? It takes so long for you to list one item. And she said, oh, because her partner wouldn't let her upgrade to a faster internet. It cost too much, she said. And I said, but how much time would you save if you actually upgraded? That's crazy. So look, I guess I'm telling you that story because I do believe in investing in you. I do believe in getting the right tools and, and equipment if it means being faster because time is money. And if you're wasting time, then um, you need to do something about it. I um, struggled with this, I, like I said myself, when I started my new business. I had this crappy computer and it was my partner's encouragement, bless him, of saying, you know, why don't you go and buy yourself a new one? Why don't you get a fast one? And I said, really? Oh, but it's so expensive and I haven't even really started earning money yet. And he said, look, I'm a builder. I can't have a hammer that might break on me. It'd be dangerous. And it's not like a computer's necessarily dangerous, but it's slow and you're never going to be able to achieve as much as you would without a better one. So look, I hope that's some encouragement for you to get the right equipment and software. And I mentioned on um, the e-lesson some of the types of things you might like to think about. So you can refer to that if you haven't already. Um, do beware of just walking into any old shop and letting, I guess, the guys sell you into something or the girls that you don't really need. Do your research first. And now you're part of this wonderful group. Use the private Facebook members lounge to ask others opinions. They care about you. A lot of them are very advanced in the space and um, just ask, tell them what your research you've done, tell them what you're thinking of buying and go from there. And don't forget that we've also got the um, rebate money available to you, which I'll remind you about as well soon. Um, you know, use that to access the program as well, to access the right equipment so that you can participate in the program. Okay, moving on to some of the content we covered um, in the e-lesson, and that was browsers. So, hands up if you use and have always used and only use the Internet Explorer, the E on there. If you don't know what that is, that's that blue E. Hands up if that's you. If you're an Internet Explorer kind of gal or girl, guy or gal. Okay, quite a few hands going up. Now, let me tell you something on that. Typically, people who use Internet Explorer often work for big corporations or governments or council, those kinds of big, bigger organizations, often whom are adverse to risk and often whom to implement a new browser, it would be such a massive company-wide thing that they don't do it. Now, interestingly, and I believe I covered it in the e-lesson a couple of years ago, there was a bit of an Internet Explorer security scare. And they actually advised even, you know, people like ABC, etc., that you change from Explorer. And a lot of people went, why and how and, and, you know, what do I even do here? The thing to understand about browsers is they're totally free. And you simply go onto some of those links I gave you in the e-lesson and you download a new browser. And then rather than going to, say, the blue E to open the internet and start surfing, 
you would go to, say, the fox, which is a Firefox symbol. Or you go to that bouncy ball, the red, green, and yellow, which is Google Chrome. Now, this is an important lesson that I really do want you to do. It shouldn't take long, but I want you to try some new ones. This is my first step in pushing you out of doing what you've always done. Now, there will be cases throughout the following lessons to come that I specifically say use Firefox to do this or use Chrome to do this. So this is why I actually need you to download this and try it out. Safari, of course, is, of course, a Mac-based system. So that's what you may use on a Mac, which is why I included in there. Opera is the O. It's not as co common these days. Guys, can you all text me what your preference currently is? What do you like to use? Firefox, Chrome, Explorer, and why? I'll tell you while you do that what I like. Um, <clears throat> it was a web developer friend of mine who first said to me, try Google Chrome. And I said, really? Google has a browser as well? He said, yeah, it's really fast too. And you know what? I found when I was designing websites, geez, it was fast. It was loads faster. And then I found over the years, I've also got Firefox. So personally, I tend to flick between Chrome and Firefox most of the time. Um, Firefox, you'll find a lot of plugins. Um, they're like add-ons. They're extra things you can put on your browser to do stuff. That's the way I'll explain it. Keep it simple to start with. Um, Firefox has a lot of those. A lot of them are developed for that, kind of like how lots of apps are developed for the iP iPhone, if you like. Um, but having said that, we still do have Internet Explorer and we still do what we call cross-checks because... <laughs> let's say someone designs your website it's great if it looks good for you because you always look at it in internet explorer but it's no good at all if half the population's using firefox and they see it looking really messy so you would have noticed that in that e-lesson i actually encouraged you to um pull up your website in some of the different browsers and just see how different or similar it looks <coughs> Okay, we've got lots of different suggestions coming through. That's great. I hope you're liking all the interaction we do on these sessions because I hate nothing worse than being talked to. I like to interact when I learn and I know I learn best that way myself. Right, now apart from browsers, and I apologize to some of you who are going, this is way too easy. Trust me, the coming weeks get harder. But for some people, this stuff is very new to them and we do need to go over it. So the difference between the word browsers and search engines. So browsers is something that we can view the internet through. Search engines are something we can find stuff on the internet through. So hands up those of you who use Google. Number one, that's the only place you go and you search. Usually pretty common choice, Google these days. Look, the statistic of how many people are actually using it varies. I probably provided some of the e-lessons last I knew. I think it was in the 90s. But because Yahoo, for instance, in uh, Australia does have some pretty good links with, say, the um, Channel 7 TV network, some people do use it. Bing, which was formerly MSN, is still used by a lot of, say, Hotmail users um, and others do use it. So, look, even if it's a small percentage of the market, the fact that 5 or 10% of the market use it, if you want to really expand your market reach, if that's your objective, then it's certainly something you possibly should be looking at. So in this week's lesson, I did encourage you to try a new one out, to search for stuff, maybe search for your company name and compare where you come up in Google. Is it the first page, second page, 40th page? And where you come up in Yahoo and Bing? Because my point here is the search engines actually index your site differently, okay? So who has, hands up if you've already done that exercise, you've tried a different search engine. Okay, very good. Okay, moving on. That one's pretty straightforward, so that's good to see. All right, security. Now, this stuff is pretty important, and I gave you lots of resources and links. Again, some of you will know this. It's easy. You don't need to cover it. But I tell you what, it's good to revisit it, even if you feel like you have it sussed, because there are always new virus things coming out. You know, just as quick as they come up with a solution, there's another type of virus out. Um, some of the resources I showed you were this. Anthony, you may like to um, text chat this link through to everyone for their convenience. 
Um, staysmartonline.gov.au is one of them. So as the .gov.au suffix on the URL or web address suggests, this is a government-funded website and it's all about staying smart online. So remember when I said, apart from you learning this stuff, you may like to teach your teenagers or kids or grandkids. You can see here on the screen, um, there's a teens button and a kids button. So they're two areas you may like to go into. Just the other day on Ms. Sunday, my eight-year-old was about to start um, going on the computer as he always does. But he does such nonsense stuff. Does any other parents out there get fed up? He was on YouTube mucking around. I said, here, come here. How about you learn something? So I pulled up the site and I started saying, read this on the kids page. And I started clicking around and saying, do that. And he absolutely loved it. He had heaps and heaps of fun. So I thought, I'm going to add this because I didn't actually include some of this in the first round's webinars. I thought, I'm going to include this tonight because it might be helpful to these guys. So look, they're always adding stuff to the site. Um, I presume some of you could click on home internet users or small and medium business. Fully explore that and some of the great um, resources they've got there. And apart from that site, there is cybersmart.gov.au. I guess this is targeting more your kids, um, teens and parents. And this is where I started finding some really cool um, things that Rio and Matisse, my five-year-old, could do too. So she was on here drawing pictures Rio was reading about cyberbullying and so on. So good for you to understand this new and very crazy world, to be honest, that these kids are growing up in um, and to be able to better support them as they, you know, move forward into the world. Because I tell you what I see out there is I hear parents saying, well, they should teach them that at school. And I hear the teachers saying, well, they should teach them that at home. And in between, the only person who misses out is the poor child who's not getting the support and guidance they need around this stuff. A lot of them act like they're all brave and they know what they're doing and they don't need you to tell them anything. Of course they do. But as I don't know, anyone who's been a parent would probably know, um, often they're actually through these sorts of actions and, and emotions screaming out for some leadership and some um, some guidance as well. So please feel free to use these. Um, look, do they get this stuff at school? At some schools, yes. Um, to what degree? Well, it depends on the day and the teacher and I guess what was happening and all that kind of stuff, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to back it up at home. Now, here's one for the younger ones. This is the one that my son had a lot of fun on Sunday on. So Bud E, if anyone's seen the movie Wall E, I guess they got the idea from there. So it's kind of cool in that it puts you through questionnaires about is this safe is that not safe and I tell you what some of the questions I was thinking oh god I'm not sure the answer to that one but it really made you think i.e you know should you put this type of um uh, picture online is it safe or is it not you on holiday and I think he put I think I told him put no because then people might know you're not at home they might go and burgle you but the answer was yes because it wasn't really showing where on holiday you were but really get some thinking about what information to share and not to share and so on. After every bit of questionnaire it takes you back and you build this robot so you first get to choose a head and then you have to go off and do another exercise. You, if you succeed in that you get to come back and you get to pick a body and so on so another really cool resource and you know what even if you're not a kid even if you don't have kids I encourage you to go on the site and have a play and just see if you can get the answers right because it really gets you thinking who thinks they might do that themselves okay um apart from all this kid stuff um internet connection very important this week that you guys understand internet connections. After all, this whole program came about really because we have the NBN um, rolling out throughout Australia. Now, the number one people thing most people want to know is when does the NBN hit me, hit, hit me here? So I did supply on um, the e-lesson this handy link here, which is where the NBN rollout is. And I encourage you to go ahead and do this. So if I want to be selfish me, I know my postcode and I can say, when is it coming to my area? And I hit return and let's see what comes up. So all of you can go ahead and do this. You may like to do it now and then you can tick off a part of your homework. How's that? Okay. So here we go. Fiber work to commence within three years will commence work in your postcode from September 2014 in phases with work scheduled to commence in 2020. 
14, um, etc. So there we go. Um, now, the, th the really important point to make on all of this is people go, a lot of people would read that and go, oh, gosh, I'm not getting it for another two years. I'm a business owner. I need it. This is terrible. The fact is, in Australia, in most places, not all, we do have broadband. And broadband is kind of fast enough to do most stuff. Not all, but most. So the biggest mistake I don't want any of you to make is to go, oh, well, all of this is hopeless. I'm just going to wait. I'm not going to do anything because I don't have the fast internet. And I want all of you to go out there as educated people into the community and tell people who are moaning about not getting the internet and not having fast enough internet that really if they get this knowledge on board, there's not too much they can't do. The fact is when it comes, it's just going to be even faster and even better. So is this a handy resource? Has everyone gone and had a look? I see Tatiana has said, I can't even get ADSL. I do feel for you, Tatiana. Where exactly are you? What postcode or, or area of Queensland? I'm curious. Um, Jackie's asked for me to type 4556. Jackie, you could do this yourself, but I will because I'm a nice person. What's having there? We'll go back to the start. Okay, here we go. I'd say it'd be pretty similar. Not commence work on the MBN in your area to keep up to date, subscribe to their newsletter. Or you can find out more about the rollout. So you can certainly look on there too. Hmm, interesting. You might have to come and live down in Marichta with me, Jackie. <laughs> now, um, the next thing I showed you, a lot of people really enjoy this um, when they discover it, is speed test. Who has run a speed test on their location? Speedtest.net you need to go to. Hands up if you already have. Cool. Okay. Who would like to see me do a speed test right now? So you can just see it in action and see how very easy some of these exercises are. So don't think, oh, I've got to get to this. It's such a big thing. It really isn't. Okay. I'm going to show you super quick. A few hands went up there. Here we go. I go to speedtest.net, remembering that I'm running a webinar and all that kind of stuff. So you could be doing this with me, guys. Feel free to pull it up. Okay, here we go. It's a really cool graphic it does, actually. And then I click Begin Test. And it checks out bunches of stuff. It knows exactly where I am. Okay, here we go. We're going to go for a drive in a minute. Little speedometer will go up. Isn't that cool? Now, what this little tool is going to do is it's going to tell us, will tell me and you, the download speed and the upload speed. Now, I did write this in the e-lesson, but just to go over exactly what this means, the download speed is the speed at which you pull things down from the internet, okay? So there's my download speed. It's 1.91 millibytes per second, okay? Now, what that means is if I want to pull down an image or a video or a sound file, something like that, that's the speed at which it will come down, okay? Now, the upload speed is always slower, always, than the download speed. And here's mine, 0.35. So it's kind of slow. To give you an idea, when we have the NBN, we're going to get speeds of around 40 millibytes per second. Is that right, Anthony? I believe it's in that vicinity, so it's significantly better. And the uploads, I think, are going up to something like at least one. Is that right, Anthony? Uh, megabytes. Okay, cool. So you're going to notice a decided difference. Probably the biggest difference you will notice is the fact that you'll, um, rather than hit download and go and get a cup of tea, it'll be lightning quick in your downloads folder. Or you may go to uploads and photos and rather than sit there and wait for it to do it, lightning quick, it'll be up. So just imagine the grabbing of two seconds and five seconds and on it goes every single day and everything you do online, depending on what it is and, and what you're doing online, over time, you really are going to save quite a lot of time. So that's really the exciting 
very, very exciting part of the NBN. Personally, I can't wait. Because I lived in the UK, we had lightning fast speeds. I've traveled in the US a lot and Asia, and they've got lightning fast speeds. And I guess it's a, a political issue, and it is one, It is the single largest infrastructure spend that the government here in Australia has ever made. Um, but I guess they're hoping to get it back through the economic benefits it will generate as well. Okay. Um, we've nearly got through the content. I noticed of um, it is a big lesson tonight in terms of covering off lots of um, housekeeping, if you like, on top of content. So bear with me and I'll open it up for questions. What to back up? This is in the e-lesson again, but a few points from my point of view. Backups are so important, guys. Who here has ever lost data? Hands up and you've just been gutted. It's really impacted on your business or your personal happiness. Sure, lots of people. I don't think you meet too many business owners or people, to be honest, that haven't lost something from not backing up before or because a computer crashed or it got wet or it got stolen or whatever it was. Now, I've made, I, I want to make the point that it's not just about backing up a few files, the stuff on your My Docs. There's stuff that you may forget, like your phone. How many of you have lots of data on your phone now? perhaps personal contacts, emails, um, I don't know, passwords and things, and you'd be pretty devastated if you lost them. Probably the contacts is the biggest one. All right. And who's guilty of not having really backed it up really ever or very often or for a while? It's probably a few of us. Yep. I'm going up and down. I can see your hands. Well, you know what? Me too. I only got an iPhone not so long ago, but I haven't backed it up once yet. Um, the great thing about the iPhones, of course, is it has got the cloud and um, you can sync it up so it's doing it automatically. But that's one I would certainly, you know, mental note, write it on your action plan and perhaps stuff you should be doing. And don't only do it this once because I prompted you, have it in your diary to remind you to do it on a regular basis. As I said, there is my docs. That's a fairly um, obvious one. But a lot of people forget about the pictures on their machine. So they back up the documents all the time and don't even think about all the pictures they're amassing. Perhaps they are pictures of the grandchildren or your children, personal pictures, or perhaps they're really valuable business pictures as well. You've also often got a My Videos folder. That's one a good one to back up. How many of you are using Outlook as your main email communication tool? Hands up if you're an Outlook fan. I'll tell you in future lessons why I'm not, but that's okay. I used to be a massive Outlook fan. Look, Outlook has a file called Outlook.pst. Now, over the years, the fact you haven't always, um, you, you used to not be able to get away from hard copies, say for legal documents and real estate, had to be the hard copy, fax, etc. Now, more and more people are accepting email as a legal document, as a format. And um, as a business owner, often you've got legal obligation to actually keep some of the documents that you receive via email for a period, maybe for ATO auditing purposes and so on. It is therefore very, very, very important that you do back up your Outlook file. Think of all the contacts that you've got in there, whether they're just email addresses in the inbox or actually saved to the contacts. Think of all the historical documentation. Imagine if that whole thing got wiped, you had a legal issue, and you had to prove that who said what when. You wouldn't be able to do that without that Outlook file. Therefore, go into your Windows Explorer if you use a PC or into your Finder if you're using um, a Outlook on there and search for this file, Outlook.pst. And that will be your Outlook data file. If you may need some help with this, because personally, I'm not even 100% confident. I'd rather get the IT guy to do it and know that it was done well and make sure that forms part of your backups too. Music, don't know about you, but I'm a massive music lover. I'd be devastated if I lost all my music. I've painstakingly gone through a lot of old CDs and made them digital so I could get rid of these becoming scratched and cracked and all the rest of it CDs. So that's something you may like to back up. Bookmarks, some people don't realize that as you go through and bookmark stuff on internet sites, you can actually export those. So if again, your computer died, it got stolen, it got in the fire, whatever the case was, you would still be able to quickly and easily locate your favorite sites and anything else you refer to. And also throughout these lessons, I'll teach you how you can even back up your Facebook data, which is a really, really good thing to do should your account ever get hacked. So how do you back up? You know, what do you do? 
You've got a few options. I believe I covered them in the e-lesson. And I also referred you to um, a more elaborate <clears throat> uh, lesson on cloud computing that I developed and delivered on behalf of the Queensland government earlier this year. And on there, I talk through some pretty great systems and solutions for cloud computing. I'm a massive fan of cloud myself because when you back some of these things up to the cloud, it doesn't matter where you are or what happens. Let's say my computer did get stolen, which I've had it stolen before from my hotel room when I was sleeping. In that case, it didn't matter that I had a presentation to do to 200 tourism operators on the Gold Coast the very next day. My presentation was safely stored in the cloud. I got to the venue, I downloaded it, and I presented it. No one would have known any different. Similarly, that day, I didn't lose a day's business. I went to my friends. I said, have you got a laptop and the internet I could use? She said, sure thing, and away I went. I've known friends who, you know, they thought they're doing the right thing because they backed up to the hard drive, and then the the um, thief has, has come into their house, they've taken their laptop and the hard drive next to it. So great use that backup hard drive was. If you are into the hard drive um, physical thing, and look, it doesn't hurt, help, hurt to have multiple options, some cloud, some hard drive, etc. Just make sure you have a couple of hard drives. I suggest you have um, one and that you rotate them. So keep one off site in case, you know, something did get damaged or fire or, or things stolen. And make sure you check them too. I've heard of companies who are diligently doing their backups. And then when they suddenly needed it, they realized that they actually hadn't been working. No one had actually logged in and checked the files. So look, there's a few tips on backups. And there are online systems that you can actually set to back up automatically certain files every single week, which might also be a really, really good idea. Right, email. I've already mentioned um, I'm not a huge fan of email. I find it's overwhelming and you get so many. Oh, gosh, sorry. However, if you are going to do email, I gave you some tips in terms of getting ready to have an online success um, of a business. And that is you have two choices when it comes to email and your address. You can be um, uh, your name at Big Pond or at Hotmail or at Gmail, which is great for just having an email address to get started. But I was, would always recommend that you have an at your domain name as an at the creativecollective.com.au or at whatever your business is called. One, because it looks more professional. That's just one reason. When it comes to that kind of stuff, the moment I see a big pond or a Gmail or something on someone's account, personally, I think amateur, like they really haven't even gone to the trouble to do that. And a lot of people don't go to the trouble, I think, because they think it's really expensive and really difficult to do. And it's not, you know, it can start from three and five dollars a month, which isn't going to break the bank. The other huge benefit, and this is probably even more important than looking professional, is that when or if you want to change Internet service providers, which many of you may want to when the NBN comes out, you may discover that whoever your current provider is, be it Telstra, Optus, Vodafone, whoever you're with, you may say, wow, this other crowd have got this great new um offering out I want to jump ship so if that happens you're going to have to give up that email if it is say big pond now you might think that that might not have any impact but it actually does um, I was working with a day spa client and she had a, um, a at big pond email address and I had set up a website and I said do you want an email address with this it's free it's part of the website hosting package you've got and she said oh no and I said really it looks so much more for professional please get it I basically pleaded with her and she said no no I can't be bothered with that I'm quite happy with my big pond well what do you know she changed locations and in changing she couldn't get Telstra or she decided for whatever reason that Optus had a better plan so she changed to Optus and she let everyone know sure by email that her email had changed but you know what it's like not everyone remembered to change it and to this day she still misses out from all those years of business she had trading with that big pond because she was using that kind of address. Since then, she's seen the light, thank goodness, and she now uses an at um, email address that's connected with her website. I explained to people, it's kind of like a PO box. It means you can go anywhere with this thing without it impacting on your business. So I strongly encourage you to do that. Um, I've got some comments here by Alan. Um, Alan Musgrave says, but by having a Gmail address will assist you coming up in searches, apparently. 
Oh, Alan, I haven't heard that one. Look, I do have a Gmail address and I will talk about in future lessons um, the great things to do with Gmail because a lot of people don't realize that with Gmail, you actually can run your at the Creative Collective or at whatever your username is through that system. And I do, my whole company does, and I recommend it. But in terms of helping you in searches, no, it doesn't at all. There are other Google tools that help you coming up in search engines, but Gmail is not one of them. Okay, tablets and other internet-enabled devices. I talked a little bit in the e-lesson about the um, equipment that you'll need to succeed. Now, as all of you know, you do have access to a rebate as part of this program. Now that you're all paid, registered members, you can go out and buy any type of internet-enabled device you like, provided that you can do the course on it. So we've suggested that mobiles, Kindles, things like that that are a little bit limiting probably aren't going to be suitable, but certainly some kind of tablet that is an iPad, an Android, or there's many out there these days, or it could be a new laptop, could be a new computer, and provided you meet the criteria, which is all outlined on the um, getuptospeed.com.au slash rebate page of our website. Anthony, you might like to send that URL through to them. Um, all you have to do is purchase that. Uh, actually, here's the criteria um, between now and 31 December, and we will pay you back $175. How nice is that? We'll help you buy it. Has anyone already submitted their rebate claim? It's a pretty great offer. Um, Jeannie has said, what is an Android, please? Okay, I might need your help on this one, Anthony. But essentially, my understanding, Jeannie, is that Google, they have a go at everything. They decided that they would create their very own platform, if you like, and, and um, product, and that is called an Android. And it's super fast is the feedback that I'm getting. I don't have one. My dad is a massive fan of the Android. Um, the Android market in terms of um, apps is growing very, very fast. So whilst my, many people think of the iPhone and iPads when it comes to apps, the Android certainly have apps. Um, oops, Anthony said he can't talk, but I'll let him be able to. One moment, we'll see if he can give us some feedback. Okay, Anthony, you there with us? Okay, Anthony, your thoughts on Androids or any more comments to what I've just said? I can't hear you yet, Anthony. Anthony's having some computer problems. Oh, yep, sorry, computer crashed. All good. What's your thoughts on <laughs> um, Androids? So what was like that question them? again, sorry? Androids, what are they and do you like them? They're, they're great. Okay, um, Android, okay, like an iPhone. Now, not many people have iPhone, but they have a little program on them which lets you, you know, browse. It's like your computer, pretty much. It's like a, it's like a different version of a computer, let's it's just say that. It's an operating system, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, but uh, Android is good in the sense that it'll allow you to open most files and allow you to watch YouTube videos um, and flash, flash files as well as that. Um, whereas the Apple um, has a little bit more restrictions to it. Okay. So on the question of which one to buy, I have anticipated this because last time round when we had the first intake, um, a big topic of discussion in the early weeks within the private Facebook lounge was, oh, I'm going to get my rebate and which one shall I buy? Now, I can't tell any of you, well, you should all go out and buy an Android or you should all go out and buy the iPad, whatever version they're up to. It's kind of like buying a car. I would never say to you, you should all go and buy the Mini Cooper. Just because I like the Mini Cooper doesn't mean it's suitable for you or that you'll like a Mini Cooper. It very much is personal preference. So I suggest that you do some research and you come up with some questions that you've got around that research, just like you would a new car, and then you pop those in the members lounge. And I'm pretty sure you'll get an overwhelming response on people's opinion. But at the end of the day, it is still opinion and you've still got to make your own decisions. Any other comments on that, Anthony, if any of them are wondering what would suit them? Yeah, um, I would. I, it, it all comes down to preference. Um, I, I got a phone call from a participant of the Guts program asking me, if if I've got an iPhone, should I get an Android or an iPad? And I said, well, you're probably going to be better off with an iPad, but um, 
most most of these systems allow you to integrate like your phone or your computer to those tablets, for example. So it all comes down to personal choice. Mm. And I mean, it's not like the old days where, you know, Microsoft stuff just didn't talk to Apple stuff. It kind of is a lot more integrated now. Having said that, it will be an easier ride if you do sort of put all eggs in one camp kind of thing. But it's an interesting kind of debate, isn't it, Anthony? It's kind of like the Ford versus Holden. <laughs> it's like the iPad versus Android sort of thing. It's, you know, you need to go with what you like. I mean, there's other considerations in terms of size. Exactly. There's some very small ones coming out. There's some very light ones coming out. So I guess you've got to really think about how and when you'd use this thing. You know, is it going to be something you want to have in your handbag or small um, that doesn't take up much room? Well, then maybe go for one of those smaller solutions. Do you want that big screen? Then maybe go for the iPad. Um, is it for your children? I mean, I know that guided me in my decision um, I know that my kids have iPads at school and I wanted to, apart from the things I wanted to use it for business, I wanted to support them in their learning. So I actually go in and do classroom help every now and then and I worked out what apps they use and I've downloaded those and now I support them at home by using the exact same things they're doing at school, which I find really useful. Do you have one of these yourself, Anthony? Uh, I, I have, I've owned an iPad and I've owned Android. Yeah. So but not currently owning them? No, I don't, no, sadly. <laughs> That's another story, right? Okay, so the rebate um, website is getuptospeed.com.au. I believe it's the rebate page. It may even be rebate claim once you get in the members area as well. Okay, guys, that is the content for tonight. Just a couple more wrap-up things. Um, please know that you can go to the mentors page and you can review a list of all the mentors. And as I said, we're hoping to get a few new ones online. So that's where you go if you want to see who you might be able to meet with. I know a question's already come through from someone, I can't even remember their name and I wouldn't name names anyway, saying, um, can I make this mentor and can I make them every week? I need to make it very clear that the mentors are donating their time as part of this program on a total volunteer basis. Some of the mentors will be more than happy to meet you once a week. Others simply won't have the time availability. What we do as part of this program is you log into the resource portal by clicking on that top green key using your username and password. Click on access a mentor up here and then fill this in. Most of you need to meet the mentor once and that's what we call a mentor match. Now after that session, you might say, mm, we just didn't click. So there's no point scheduling in um, a weekly session anyway until you work out if you've got the right person for you. Others of you might go, oh my gosh, they were amazing, but gee, did they give me a lot to think about and I don't need to see them for a long time because I've got so much to do until I see them again. So there's also that train of thought. Others of you, I totally get, want to make it a regular basis, but it's up to you to do that first initial meeting and then negotiate between you two. You don't need to involve us on what will work for you and what will work for them. And um, they are very generous, so just be understanding of that. If you can help me out by buying a coffee, that's kind of nice as well. Okay, moving on. Now the Members Lounge. For those of you who have not yet made it in here, I wanted to show you what it looks like in there. Um, we've now got 198 members I noted tonight, which is very exciting. And I can see as recently as tonight, Irene Sturk was editing a document um, and basically adding her details to there. Let's see if Irene's online, actually. Um, she is. Welcome, Irene. There you are. You're famous. <laughs> now, Irene was absolutely doing the right thing here. She would have gone up to these tabs, don't miss those, and clicked on the files and clicked on program participant directory. And in there, you have the opportunity to list your name, where you're from, your website, social media links. You give as much information as you're prepared to give away. If you don't want people to know your phone number, don't give them your phone number. If you do want them to know, then pop it in. Now, some of the other members made the mistake of creating new docs, new docs, new docs for themselves, thinking that was the right thing. That is not the right thing to do. Simply click on the file and add them all to the same one handy list because it's kind of annoying for people to have to jump into different documents. Um, there are a couple of other handy documents and we can add to that um, filing system if needed. There is a meetups one and um, please do just let us know if there's anything else you need. 
So what do you do if you're new to this whole Facebook groups thing? We can write something in here. There is no silly question. So simply, um, you know, write, I would like, I can't decide which to buy, the Android or this. Um, you might say, um, has anyone met with this mentor before? Do you think that would suit me if this is my situation? You can write, I'm working on e-lesson one and I'm stuck on this question. Can anyone help me? So there's all these sorts of questions you can ask, but you could also go on there and celebrate. So you could say, oh, wow, I've achieved this great thing. Something perhaps that, you know, your husband, your wife, your friend, your whoever else is in your life may not care about or be interested in or show that much enthusiasm for because they're just not excited about the stuff. You'll find generally you'll get a pretty good response in here. You can also say you're having a bad day and you'll find that the other program participants will quite possibly prop you up. So Zoe and I, um, and indeed our whole team, firm believers that this is fast becoming a very, very, very powerful networking resource. So do use it. Um, we are in there every day. So answering questions as best we can and referring them to people that we can't. And um, mentors often answer questions, which is pretty wonderful. And we see some really fantastic results coming out of people networking and doing stuff in there. So make the most of it. Um, the learning paths. Look, I don't want to overwhelm you guys, but I do want to remind you that as part of this program, you are required to um, choose basically a, um, an outcome, and that is a website plan or a digital marketing plan, and that if you do that, you can get accreditation. I'm just going to say that much today, nothing more because um, I don't want to overwhelm you. But don't worry, we'll step you through it in the coming weeks. Here it is. Um, it's not mid-December. For you guys, it'll be about October, November. I'll give you the exact dates. And it will be a website plan or a digital marketing strategy. Okay, thank you for being so patient with me. That's all the content I've got tonight. I hope you learned some stuff in addition to the e-lesson I've already covered. I'd now like to offer the opportunity um, to for you to ask questions. So feel free to ask them via the text chat or we're now going to put all your hands down. Please flash your hand or raise your hand if you have a burning question and I'll do my best to get to each and every one of you. Now, if during um, this question phase you ever don't get a question answered, please don't hesitate to pop it over in the private members lounge and we will answer it in the coming days. Okay, Susan says, does this give participants access to our personal Facebook page? No, not at all, Susan. So you are in the Facebook group and you are you, Susan, presumably. Now, if I wanted to be your friend, I would still have to request to be your friend. Now, some of you will do this and some of you will make friends within the group and be more than happy to accept them. Others will say, oh, well, I'm not really that keen to, you know, take all these extra friends on. My, I have a really private Facebook group, uh, Facebook profile, and I just really want to keep in touch with the people I know really, really well. And if that is your spin on things, then that's fine. That's totally up to you. Does that help, Susan? Probably in the coming weeks when you do the Facebook lesson, um, I guess Facebook profiles, account settings, privacy settings, we cover all that stuff and it'll make you feel much more comfortable. Okay, everyone, lots of great feedback. People saying they're excited and can't wait for more. Okay, people saying they have to get off to the family. That's okay. Um, Irene's asked, is a web disk in connection with my domain considered the cloud? Not quite sure what you mean there, Irene. Any ideas, Anthony, what Irene Sturk might be getting at there? Yeah, um, so if she means a web disk, so... Any place with uh, any website that you go to, which says you can put all your files um, on this site, um, is a cloud service um, to an extent um, because none of the files are in physical copy on your computer. They're actually hosted on the internet, meaning you can access them anywhere. So I'm pretty sure that's what Irene is getting to. So yes. Okay. Um, Cecile here has asked, are you going to cover cloud computing in more details in future webinars as I found it quite complex and the options rather costly for a small business when I read the e-lesson? Okay, Cecile, your best bet, um, because we have prepared a lot of resources in other ways and we wanted to acknowledge the fact that some people participating 
in the Get Up to Speed program may have already participated in the free webinars and other things we've run on behalf of Queensland Government, your best bet to learn more about cloud computing would be a one hour webinar just on cloud computing, which is within um, the online resources portal. To find it, you need to log into the online resources portal, go to the resources menu, and then under there, you'll see something saying DD webinars. Once you go into DD webinars, um, locate the cloud computing one, hit play, sit back and take it all in. And after that, I reckon you'll have a much better idea of cloud computing. I really, really pride myself on sharing sometimes quite complex information in a way that you understand. So after you've watched that, if you have any questions, of course, don't hesitate to give us a yell. Um, Amelia said, I've just selected to join the group. Yay, Amelia, we'll let you back, we'll let you in um, either tonight or tomorrow. Um, I tend to leave that job to Elise because she checks it against her registration forms and I don't want to step on her toes. So I may leave that to her. Um, but yeah, you will be in in the next 24 hours. Okay, lots of people logging off. All good. Um, any other questions? Um, Phil Trudgett says, what does secure my email browser mean? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Phil. Let's see if I can get you uh, unmuted so he can clarify. Depends if you've got a microphone, Phil. G'day, Phil. I've just unmuted you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you. Fabulous. Uh, that's all right. Um, uh, I just got my question answered. I was just... Um, in one of the one of the lessons where it said make sure you secure your email and your web browser and everything. I just wasn't quite didn't quite understand uh relate the terminology to you. But you're saying you're right now, did Anthony just answer it for you? Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's all all good. Okay. Fabulous. I'm scrambling but I'm keeping up. Yay! Well that's what we hope and um there's lots of options for help if you're ever feeling like you're not keeping up, all right? Yep, yep. No, thank you. Okay, cheers, Phil. I'll, I'll mute you again, see who else I can help here. Um, Liz says, will you show us how to back up from iPhoto and iTunes, also emails to an external drive by versus cloud? No, we won't specifically show you how to do that, Liz, because um, there's too many people on other solutions and that would be too specific for those who aren't on um, the Mac range. So if you need help on backing up from iPhoto and iTunes, I suggest you pop onto the Members Lounge and ask people how to do it. What you'll actually find is some of the very helpful people, including mentors, other participants, and ourselves, will actually go and record little um, video tutorials and pop them up. So we'll show you how we do it and we'll pop it up so that you should be able to follow it. So yeah, encourage you to pop over to there and ask exactly what it is you're struggling with in that regard. Linda Brown says, would you mind telling us the address link for the cloud instruction, please? Okay, so it's not so much of an address. It was more a route to find it. So um, I'll just type that out for you, which is log into online resource portal. Go to resources tab. DD webinars. And then look for the cloud computing webinar. Hopefully, I'll send that to everyone. So those others who may want it, it's there. Uh, Mary says, thanks again. Great to be great to be refreshed. Mary, you've been a great supporter. Love having you back. Thank you. Eunice, she's jumping straight in there. She wants to know, Blogspot, have one but have trouble with the email. Went so far as to verify it but hit the trouble spot. Is there a shortcut? That's a very specific question. Um, can I get you to post that in the members area as well? I wouldn't normally use Blogspot for email. I think it could be a little bit problematic. You might be better to get a URL as in the domain name and have your email hinge off that would be my initial feedback on that. Chris says, is the cloud, uh, cloud webinar posted on our YouTube channel? Yes, it definitely is as well. So you can go to um, youtube.com. There's actually lots of other free videos on there too. Um, and feel free to check some of those out as well. Tatiana hasn't received the e-lesson 
confirming it will appear in the resource center in a couple of days. It in fact is already in there, Tatiana, from the first round. So the e-lessons don't vary from the first round. So to access them, um, I believe you go into the online resource portal. I understand if any of you others have to log off, but if you're learning stuff, feel free to stay. Resources, e-lessons, and you should find it in there. Okay. Good night, Russell. He's logging off. Um, Chris O'Kane is saying, do you mean on the Facebook lounge for the cloud webinar? I don't know if you're having a conversation with Anthony and I'm not following, um, but no, the cloud computing video, if that's what you're referring to, is not in the Facebook lounge. Um, we have, apart from the Facebook line and lounge, an online resources portal, and that is accessed via the Get Up to Speed com.au website and then you click on the um click on green login key and that is where those videos are there's actually bunches of resources on there susan just said is cloud on the get up speed website yes lots of confusion here i've started it's in the online resources portal within get up to speed com.au find it by Clicking on green key and logging in. Okay. And Tatiana's found it. Um, Mariki, I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. I've met you so many times. I should get your clarification. Not sure about cloud computing. I'm a Mac user. Does the cloud webinar cover this? I use a time machine for backup. It's a white box that backs up automatically. Can I hook this up to the cloud? Anthony, I know you use um, Max. Any suggestions for Marika's question? Uh, yes, you can. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, um, depending on what version of Mac, I think they just brought it out on their new system that they've just updated only a few a week ago, that you can actually do that. So you can put your, your time machine on the... Um, the cloud. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, Anthony, I'm just going back a little bit further and I'm seeing questions from like Ian Blair's, the Samsung tablet okay and Jay. Did you comment on those already? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, have Is there any there that I that you haven't responded to that I should cover off from further back? Oh, I'm pretty sure I covered most of them. If If there is a question, just ask it in the questions now. Yeah. Well, actually, I think just given the time, because we're pushing closer to nine, usually these finish at eight thirty. This is yeah transpired into <laughs> quite a long lesson, and I'm um, appreciative of the fact that Anthony's on here late, and so are all of you. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. This recording will be made available soon, and can I encourage you with any further questions to join the private Facebook group posted in there. We monitor it all the time and we'll do our very best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, and Madonna said, does the Get Up Speed website link work with the iPad? I've found the web we binary, but the link does not work to open them. I'm not sure what she means by we binary. No, I'm not sure either. <laughs> <laughs> it should work with the iPad, though. We did design it iPad friendly. I can tell you that much. Thanks, guys, for all the positive comments. And we are just as excited as you about the future lessons. So looking forward to getting to know you lots more and to teaching you lots more as well. Thanks so much and good night.